the worship team leave and the organ keep he has enough flow to do that and it says in Matthew 16 and we're going to go to verses 13 and he says when Jesus came to the region of Caesarea of Philippi he asked his disciples who uh, oh, who do people say, you know? Have you ever asked anyone, what, what do you think? <laughs> and they didn't give you the right option or the right answer. That has happened to all of us, you know what I mean? Even if you have brothers, what do you think? They thought something different. It's, it's what it is. It's the nature of being a different human. But when Jesus came to that region implying that there's something in that region that we're going to go deeper into. He asked his disciples, the people that have been walking with him for at least two years, ten months, at least. Who do people say the Son of Man is? And then they replied, some say John the Baptist. Others say Elijah and still others and still others. That's the renegades. Jer Jeremiah. Or one of the prophets, you know, like we're winging it. But what about you, he asked. Who do you say I am? And Simon Peter answered, you are the Messiah, man. I mean, come on. You're the G-O-A-T. You're the goat. Best known as the son of the living God. And Jesus replies, bless are you Simon of Jonah? Jonah? Okay. For this was not revealed to you by flesh and blood, but by my Father in heaven. Lord, we know that as we stand with you, we have not put enough into the box of the day of the week to be blessed by you. None of us are ignorant. None of us are perfect. We know that if we would come to you, God, with our own perfection, nothing would happen. But we come in your name. So will you speak into our hearts. So our spirits, Lord, would take who you are. And that by your power, by your grace, and by your mercy, it will become the way that we walk day in and day out. We believe you for transformation. Have your way in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. There's healing in the room right now. I don't want you to be focusing on me because that's not about me. But there's an atmosphere today as you hear the word of God that has transformation, that has a soothing power to release and to be able to enjoy. Religion won't be able to get you, but grace and mercy will. So if you're joining in the, in the corner of religion, this is the moment to switch. But if you're in the corner of humility, you can say, Lord, if this is from you, will you have your way? I know I came all the way here, but nothing means anything. If you are not here, if you don't touch my life, but no, no empty words. But the truth of God into our life in Jesus' name. Do you need it? I want to see hands. I need, I need the truth. I'm preaching. God is going to be smacking me with you. Don't worry. We're on this together. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. What?
What about you? That's the title that the Holy Spirit has. Thank you, Mrs. Flo, Sadie, the Flo. She is known everywhere around London as Miss Flo. We have been talking about Miss Flo this week. Um, and um, the Lord uses her in magnificent, magnificent ways. So we, we praise God for your life. Um, and now you feel awkward, and I know you don't like the spotlight, so we're going to let you go. And it is what it is, and I'm going to have complaints about that later. I have 29 minutes to deliver what I believe the Lord wants us to give, and I'm going to make it happen. Are you ready? But I need you, I need you to be comfortable with confrontation. Okay, because the context of today is... It's, it, place, it places us in confrontation. So most of us think that loving is not confrontational. But by the contrary, love always confronts. Why? Because love always pops in not when you know, it's when you don't know. And, and that's the moment where a confrontation happens. My wife loves to confront me. She's a professional Olympic you know, athlete at this. There are so many things of me and my character that you can confront if you see me in the daily. My dog confronts me. Imagine how much more my wife. Like, my dog looks at me and gives me the look. Imagine how much more my kids and my wife. But those, I, I could live without, you know, because, and you say like, oh my God, he said that. Yeah, but I have God. You know what I mean? So even if all of them pass, I will still have God. You know, so sometimes as humans, we look for, for an emergency exit. And when your wife is confronting you, he said, Lord, where is, <laughs> where is the emergency exit? But where is your emergency exit with God? Most of us are, and if you're going to start judging me, I'm going to make it happen for you. You know what I mean? I'm going to go straight for your guts, mate. You know, I'm going to make it happen. You paid for the ticket to come to this place, so I'll make it worth it. All of us escape from God, and all of us look for an emergency exit when we are confronted. So from judging me to judging yourself, welcome to the same list. Way... That was a quick one, no? It was like, oh, my God, he's saying that he escapes from the, oh, yeah, we all do that. It's called being human. It's called being trapped in a package that is less than glorified, but it's getting to know how we extinguish the thirst for what it demands and still surrenders and still the lordship of Jesus Christ. That, in small letters, on the print says, being a Christian. What about you? Because we always are asking the question about someone else. But Jesus in this, in this passage, starts to, in the midst of the context, starts to explain to his disciples, the people that didn't hear him only, but are acting on what he lived and how he lived. What about you? Jesus is coming from a context of having to be confronted by the Sadducees and the Pharisees. These are to be less boring to you. The people that thought they knew because they knew law. So the people that understood themselves as the erudites, you know, like the, the knowledgeable people. You know, they, they thought of themselves like those that could tell you what you should be doing and what you shouldn't. And most of us actually are told today in every platform what to think and what we shouldn't be thinking. I mean, I'm being told, you know, by people that are younger than me what type of platform even I should not be even spending my time on. You know, like even your time is on their regard. And if they see you on that platform, they're already judging you. I mean, have you ever taken the train with someone and you looked just next to you? Have you? I mean, I know you're not nosy, but you have a cousin that told you a story about being on a train, on a, on a tube, on a subway. It depends on where in the world, you know, that you have, you have listened to this message. And 
all of us have to agree that we're nosy people. It's almost like human nature. You want to know what is their experience about. Can I have an amen? You know what I mean? Like I have dead Christians, Lord. Can I have angels that flap at least, Lord? You know, it is what it is. I know you, like this would not come out in the YouTube, so you want to make it louder. You know what I mean? Like, hello, you know, help me. You know, like it really is. Because you're like, mm. but the people online, they feel alone when they feel hit by the same truth that you're hit. And you're not, you're not giving it in. You're online saying, oh, they didn't react. And here you're saying, oh, that was so deep. Oh. Can you react? You can be human beings. Can you be honest? Not be Londoners? I'm sorry, mate. The spirit of London away in the name of Jesus. Amen. No fakeness. No superficial. You know, you're healed and saved. You're, you're loved. You're not rejected. No one is suspicious of you. God has designed this space for you to be free. Can Zach say amen? Amen, amen everyone. Everyone. <laughs> I got only 24 minutes to lay on you, but I'm going to do it. The Lord says, I might have a confrontation, but that doesn't define what I can control and who you are. And I'll prove it to you. He is in a confrontation in the verses before in this chapter with the leaders, the religious leaders. He is actually in a, in a confrontation with what they what they think, what they can control. They're wanting to control the temperature of what people can think of God. Have you ever been in an environment of what people can think of God? Can you ever imagine being in an atmosphere that they say, okay, you know, you, you don't know God like that. So this is not for you. And Jesus is actually walking with the disciples saying, if you're walking with me, this is all who I am. So if I, I am, then you can walk. This is the problem. Jesus was bringing life while they were constraining people into judgment and control. So around us now, we have things that you have to take to be a good Christian, a good person, a good environment, a good, I mean, we're counting even carbon, carbon, Footprints, you know what I mean? Like, what, what is going on with the world? If you're breathing, you're a liability. But Jesus came to give you life. What a demand. Don't breathe. And God said, everything that has breath. See, there's some people right now that know that the Bible gives us truth and that the world is fallen. And that what everything that is surrounding us, while everything that is kind of like pushing at us might be wrong, God is about to make us free. It doesn't matter the things that surround us. That cannot judge the temperature of our relationship with God. And that's why Jesus says, what about you? And all of us have exercised our own, like, you know, kind of voucher for excuse this week, saying to God, you know what, but the thing is that when, where, where I'm working, this relationship, this friendship, the, you know, all of us have redeemed, redeemed, check that word, redeemed that word, redeemed that voucher of excuse on our faith while we are not believing what is truth. And Jesus is confronting all of our vouchers, all these freebies, you know what I mean? I was told by a friend the other day, you know, they were lining up in a place that we, we got together. And they were like, no, 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 you don't know. There's an app that gives you free drinks. And I'm like, there's some sinners in this place, yeah. You can tell who are sinning. Yo, I'll tell you that what kind of drinks they are. It's not for me to judge. But I'm telling you they were looking for the freebie. And sometimes we are caught on our faith looking for our free stuff and we don't want to pay the way to the cross. But don't worry, your freebie is going to be exposed. It is going to be for free. You don't have to pay anymore for this revelation. Jesus is actually saying, you know, I might be confronted for the sake of your freedom. Confrontation always precedes freedom. Everything in your life that you don't want to be confronted by, take a moment, take a note, take a thing. 
Everything you don't want to be confronted about or with is holding part of who you are and your freedom. And Jesus came to fight for everything that is holding you behind bars. He said, I had enough. When Jesus came to give his life, when he walked with us, when he walks with us, still present tense, he is confronting everything he's keeping us behind bars from access to him. So Jesus is on a fight. Every one that thinks that Jesus was Pantene Jesus, everyone that thinks that Jesus was that soft-spoken guy that, you know, kind of have an emo tone of voice, you know, like, you know, I rather would. No, Jesus was violent. He will come against everything that was keeping us from him. He was saying, you know what, it's not enough. I don't like that. There is more to that story. I would do more with that life than is happening. So away with that soft-spoken, non-table turning Jesus that we want to praise because it keeps us out of danger because we want to praise that soft-spoken moments that like I'm, I'm praying about it. I, I don't have to change about this, you know what I mean? I'm on prayer. Whatever. You're disgusting. Like you don't, you don't like yourself. And Jesus is saying hello. You know, like some of the guys in the back are saying, you're getting canceled today, Chris. You know, it is what it is. Don't worry about it. It is what it is. Truth gets you canceled nowadays. And Jesus gives us context for our cancel. Oh, my God. I love to be canceled on context. I mean, forget about the rest of the preaching. You know, context is, is the best way, the best place to be canceled. Jesus is saying, confrontation cannot cancel me. And control will not be the God of your life. All type of control will bring a demand. But all type of control is an enemy to God. And God is about the mercy. And the mercy that leads us to repentance. Control doesn't lead us to repentance. But God and his mercy leads us to repentance. The gospel is not about being controlled. The gospel is about, it's about a mercy that is immersive in our blood, in our stream, in everything we think, in everything we do. Mercy takes over. You cannot accept God and accept a little Mount of rules. God takes over. Mercy is what leads you to repentance. And this is what Jesus is pointing to today. He's pointing to repentance. What about you? Do you know how to repent? I don't know you, but every time I'm getting older, you know, so I'm giving God less, less of a work. Or at least I'm trying. I mean, consciously, at least. You know, I mean, I think I would love to think... Whatever, I'm trying to be very open with you guys. You know, I would love to think that I'm giving God less work. Can you be discipled by me? Hello. You know? It's like, don't give God a hard day. You know what I mean? Like, just like, uh, uh, mm, I'm not going to make it difficult. I'm sorry. You know what I mean? Like, can you be broken? It's what it is. You know what I mean? Like, don't give him a sweat. You know what I mean? Like, he invented sweating so he can. But you don't need to. Sometimes I can hear God saying, what about you? And that's a very sobering question. I want to hear the Holy Spirit talking to me in such a way that is so clinical, so profound, so intimate. Some people want big words so they have no responsibility about them. But what about intimate questions like, and you? Very close corner. You know, like those kind of questions that only someone that knows you kind of like. Hmm. You know when, when a friend has seen you do something on Saturday and they see you in church on Sunday and they're like. And I surrender. And they're next to you on the worship like. This is not surrendered. You know what I mean? Like, and they're throwing you on, under the bus. You know, like I know we're all broken. And I know we need all the grace, but hey, you need friends like that. 
confrontation. I'm just going to give you a little bit of an ease, you know. All control brings a man. But all control is an enemy of God's mercy. Because it is not by control that we change. It is not by saying, Lord, I will stay away at 2 a.m. from that website. It is not by counting my finances that I will become more generous. It, it is not by why I understand, Lord, and the revelation. Some of us are waiting for a dove to walk into the room, you know, kind of like to understand God. It is not by revelation that we come to be better people. It's by obedience. So a wife with religion. It is about reading the word and doing it. You don't need any applause. Who needs applause? Like, if you're guilty of this, you, you, who, how many of these people that I have in front of me, like, I, I need applause. I like applause. I don't know you, but I like applause. You don't have to applause because I'm going to go against you right now. You know, so you better, like, that was good, but uh, give me energy for actually going against you. How many of you actually go to your life and say, you know what? God, I did that really well. And you're waiting for heaven to applause. Can I have an amen? <laughs> Sorry, can I have an amen? amen? Actually, even better, if you applause for yourself, can you applause for God? <laughs> you see, you're guilty. You're guilty. So we're looking for mercy. We're looking for a question. We're looking for a Jesus that seemingly is coming from having to be confronted by you and me. And he's actually telling us, what do you think? What about you? Jesus is asking a question. Is not when Jesus, I would say this in this different term. For the sake of YouTube and the people that don't feel the atmosphere and all the conviction that is in the atmosphere right now. You know what I mean? Sometimes we, there's no translation for what we feel in the room. It is something that you see. So you, you just don't know. But I, I, I see a translation in the atmosphere. And I don't want to leave you just being the only ones that serve it. You know what I mean? I want this to be multiplied to anywhere we are seen. What if we don't know when God is asking us, what about you? Because some of us defend that. Some of us defend that quarter very tightly. Most of us, we, we have been given a vocation this year to yield as a church, as a congregation. But to be able to yield, sometimes you have to expose, you have to give. To be able to yield on on a piece of land when you have seeds is to be able to give, to plant in the process of producing and creating. So as we are receiving the word of God right now, as we are fighting for our own life, I mean, I'm not asking you to be awake. I'm asking you to understand that you are in a fight. I'm not asking you to be excited because excitement doesn't take anyone to heaven. But I'm asking you to understand that excitement helps you to understand the word of God. And it is what you pay attention, what you respect that produces fruit in your life. Some of us actually stand in front of God day in and day out saying, what do you have to say with this? Some of us will have the boldness to say to God, I read this before. I, like, I would like some other reading, Lord. Some of us actually would, would, would go to the Bible saying this is good history, but how does it apply with me? Instead of making silence. The one of the best ways that you can love the presence of God is by silence. Be silent for two or three days. That's a, good, that's a good challenge for some people. There's some people that talk a lot in microphones, you know what I mean? 
And we get hit with a dose of three or two days with like silence. Lord, how do I eat that? How do I understand this? And Jesus is asking them in real time. Some people think like it would, ease, it would be easy to actually be with the people that were around Jesus. I don't want to make this long, you know, but I'm going to make you sweat on this one. Some of us actually think that being with Jesus while he was doing everything he was doing would have been easier for us to believe and to perform today. You know what, if I would have seen you, you know what, today they could saw me, burn me, do whatever, chastise me, criticize me. I'm good. I saw you. But that's not true. Hello. If you're following Jesus right now, you'll be as lost as they would be because Jesus is that random. First of all, he cannot be controlled. <laughs> Second of all, you are too small-minded. That's on you. You know that we're not counting the third one. So I'm going to bring a new third one. You cannot control God. So away with thinking on the week, how do I date God? <laughs> like it's like a bulletin board. You've been taught to give God a bulletin board. It's a moment to repent. Because your little mind cannot contain God's report. That's the truth. Do you want to control the word of God? Sorry, not applicable. <laughs> what are you going to do? Let's get more speed. Jesus confronted. Jesus asking a question. What about you? And that brings us to demonstration. Demonstration has us in a couple of stories. Why? And if I have to say it better, way. Jesus is not asking them to understand who he is. He's asking them to understand the way. Jesus is the way and we know that. We know it by memory. But when Jesus came to the region of Caesarea and Philippi, he was coming into a re like, a sea, like an area of villages that were worshiping exactly what he was standing on. It was a different story. It was the princes and the, the kings of indulgement. And God was asking us to be not like those. In the world that we're living today, everything is asking us to indulge in what is around. Do you like it? Does it feel good? And Jesus is saying in that same place, this is not how you're going to serve me. This is not how you're going to be identified with me. This is not what I'm going to be ruling with, over. God is saying you're going to be a rock. You're going to be solid in the midst of that indulgement, in the midst of that demand of you having to be a patron like a mother or, or a person that runs behind those things, those delights. You don't have to run behind everything that feels good. Wunderbar. The gospel makes you free. You don't have to run behind everything that your body and your emotions feels that is good. A lot of people that want to bring clicks into their thing will say, you know what? Just do what you feel. God will love you. I say you become an enemy if you do everything that you want and everything that you feel. You become an enemy of God because you didn't love God. You become what you felt. And you worship on the throne of that. That doesn't win clicks. But it's good teaching. So give and take. I'd rather have a better reputation with God than with you. Amen? There you go. There was two amen. There was two. There was two. There's two solid. I think there's three thoughtful ones. I know. I'm just being a bit. I want you to think about this because it is important that we give a thoughtful answer to Jesus. Because Jesus is asking a question. And it's not because he doesn't know. He's asking because he wants us to think. What a moment. What a privilege. God is saying, um, let's talk about this. I know my own kids, my son, my daughter, even my dog, 
when I say, let's talk about this, they look at me like, they don't trust me. I know, I'm human, like you, so don't judge me. If you don't have kids, you gotta shut up until you have them. Second, if you have kids, they're not like mine, you gotta shut up until you have mine. <laughs> Third, if you have dogs, but you don't have Lola, you gotta shut up because you don't know Lola. She will control you, boy. So I'm, I'm clean. I can give that testimony. And that's what it is. What about you? Different personalities will ask the same question, but we will be heard differently. Because I am kind of like that, that, like, so what's up? What happened? And when I said the first thing, I'm already saying the second thing. They, they're ADD as the father, you know, I'm talking about my kids, son, daughter, they're adults already. So they will look at me like, which one of the questions you want me to answer? <laughs> Most of the times you see the guilt one after the other question and you saying they're sussing out which one I want to hear first. Because they'll be honest, they'll be honest. Give my word, I'll put my hand on the fire for them, but it takes time to be honest sometimes. It's like you with God, you know, like God, this week. And then you start, God, I did this and I did that and I have this question. And all of a sudden you're saying, Lord, but also, have you been, have you been trapped in that also zone with God, you know, lately? Have you been, have you been there? I mean, anyone, anyone has been there on that also zone, you know what I mean? Like I say, Lord, and while we added, you know, I know I have your attention because I have done so many good things, you know. I have explained the word of God, the brokenness of your body to the human beings. We just been in Easter. So God, I must be in your good books. But ah, they were on Wednesday, you know. You know that thing? You know that thought? You know that convo? You know that friend? And you are amazed when God says, I know. And you're like, oh my God. And you get loud in front of God. But God wants you to be loud all day. He wants you to understand that it's not your volume or your security that he's looking. It's your trust. So Jesus wants to know, what about you? While you're trying to escape, he knows. Religion says, but <laughs> what about you? Oh, they're, they're, oh, they're saying, oh. I don't know. I didn't hear their hearts when they were beating. What do you say? What about you? Matthew the person that actually writes this book is a factual person. Some of us that are sitting in this room will get hit by this. Not by anything I just said, but you're going to get hit here. And you're going to sit down and take it as a champ. You are a factual person. You are in love with facts. You think you can control life with what you can do perfect. And I know you. And God sees you. But you know what? You will fail. Because no one is perfect. But God knows you think you are. Matthew was that kind of person. He's writing the book thinking, I'm perfect. I'm getting the facts. But the facts don't explain your heart. Wunderbar. Here you go. I mean, we are here and thinking, okay, what I read is what everyone understands. Not yours, not. You understand it the way that you have been built. And when people want to control the way that translations happen, they are taking from the personality of God. They're thinking God cannot speak to different ways of actually translating the same thing. Because when I say it's hot to you and I'm Puerto Rican, it's not the same for an English person. It's hot. This week, someone said there's going to be a storm. There's going to be 70 mile per hour winds. And I said, that's a summer breeze in the Caribbean. And the English people were freaking out like, oh, my God, we're going to have a storm. And I was like, oh, it's going to be nicer. I'm looking at how hot it's going to be so the wind is going to help us. You know what I mean? It's like, wow, if we're going to have that wind, how hot it's going to be because we're going to got to breathe. You know what I mean? Like, hello, 
Your understanding of everything is not the truth. Get on and get off. Get on with the truth. Get off from your little pride train. He was a factual human being. He was pixeled like you and me. All of us understand God and we think our little pixel of understanding is the truth. We got to be humble. So maybe this is a good prayer moment. Say, God, can I, I need, I need your humility. I need your humility. I need, I need you. You know, I think I am reading the same verse in the same Bible, you know, translation. But, you know, I might, I might be wounded in certain ways that I might, I might not understand. The next couple of weeks, we're going to be talking about healing from rebellion and rejection. And Jesus was being rejected in this one. And on, on the game, all of you guys have a spirit of rejection and rebellion. So you might just get on with the story. It's going to help you. Can we do this? Yeah. We're going to start with a friendly fire. This story provides it. This is a good moment. So Matthew, who writes, is in the mix of being rejected and being factual. Because he, he's actually saying how he saw it. But he was working for the enemy. Not like you, not like your friend, not like your uncle, not like your cousin, not like your office partner, not like the other people that go to school with you. No, don't worry about it. They're different. Or maybe you're different. Maybe they would say that you are. They're Matthew. Second, he was a publican. A publican actually is a man, a person, a, a woman that actually works for the public. So it means that they need to be loved by the public. Does that ring a bell? Can someone say, I don't like to be loved by the public? Can someone say, amen? Enoch, you don't play. You have a wife, so we know you're lying. <laughs> so he gave his life to be loved by the people. So he was not only factual and pixel, he was also publican. But he was a tax collector. He was the one that actually would give his own people the bad news that who was in power who was, in, who was actually in authority, who would enslave them because of their mistakes or their wars, would be winning over what they have won. Do you have friends that says, well, you deserve that? Do you have family members that have said that, well, you know, with the life that you have had, you know these people that try to, like, work sense into you and you're like, that doesn't help me, you know? <laughs> I don't like you right now. Like, it doesn't stroke my feelings really well right now. And then you become a Christian to say, well, I am the same with others, you know. And you're honest with yourself and you just leave them alone. Just giving, giving you some leeways, some, you know, I have no more minutes on the clock. This Matthew was distrusted and this Matthew was unpopular. But not only that, he was willing to give his reputation to a God that would do everything new. God is in the room today. God is speaking to us about this. About this great question. What about us? What about you? He wants to make it personal. God never condemns us. Whoever condemns you in the name of God doesn't know God. Because God has no condemnation. Those that come and say the law says. They don't know the law. And they definitely have done lived it. You know what I mean? Because by the law, they would be dead before they talk to you. So don't worry about it. Just ignore the thoughts and love the human. You know, it is what it is. It's easier. Jesus did it. Imitate. Be a disciple. It is what it is. What about you? In this moment in life where everything around the world is questioned with everything that we have, we will not be able to surmount into the degree of knowledge that we will need to be able to give answers to people. If you were asked today why about 90%, 95%, 99% of your life, your wife would not be able to get an answer. Your dog would look at you lost. Your friends would not understand what you're talking about. And you yourself, while you are alone, would have to ask to God. Is it true? But one thing you can, who is Jesus? There's one thing you can really answer. When everything else fails, when everything else is not controllable, 
when everything else is not on your radar, when everything else is not what you thought would be, when everything else is not what your family described, what your family accept, what your friends are going to be applauding, what everything else is not, Jesus is. In short, and as we pray, God is asking us, what about you? Is the way that we live factual and pixel, discriminating, being a publican? Or are we those that are maybe dormant? Some of us would say, I don't judge people. But what are you doing with your faith? Are you dormant? Maybe the question doesn't come against what you're doing against others. But maybe the question of Jesus today for us as a church, as people, as lovers of Christ, as disciples, is not about the religion. Because it's very likely that you, if you're here today, you knew I was going to come out of the box. Second, it is very likely that you still have questions. What about you? Jesus is asking, are you dormant? Are you criticizing, pointing fingers, actually making free rules and, and regulations for things that are happening outside? Are you doing that? Are you alive? Who do you say I am? Who do you say Jesus is in your life? Who do you say Jesus is in your health? Who do you say Jesus is with your friends? Who do you say Jesus is with your family? Who do you say Jesus is with every temptation that you have around the clock? Who do you say Jesus is? That's your Jesus. It's not the one you want to make good prayers out loud, write a little podcast moment or your little notepad in. It is the Jesus that you praise, the one that you say in this moment. Jesus is saying, who do you think I am? Uh, some say, some of us will go the Pentecostal way. You know, because Pentecostal, we be the ones that actually talk. The Anglicans will pray about it. <laughs> Pentecostal will say, hmm, I have a feeling. The dove, the dove flew around, you know, Pentecostal dove, you know, was going around. And you're like, yo, what is all that? I feel that God, and, and they're thinking about it, they're inventing it really, to be fair. But where is your relationship with God, to be fair? I think right now my son would actually say affairs. That's London, baby. It's true. Where's my relationship with God? And Jesus is asking us affairs. Where's your relationship with God? Hello. Who am I for you? We don't get power by excitement. We get power by transformation. And transformation is only a consequence of belief. In this story, Peter was the only one that had a straightforward answer. The rest of the people that came to the meeting, the people that had walked for two years, nine to ten months with him, said some say, bailing out. I'm praying in faith. <laughs> but you don't put your shoulder into the motion. Don't pray for anything that you're not going to suffer. It doesn't work. He said, Lord, I'm praying for this car. Are you getting a job? No, no, I'm, I'm praying for this brother. You buy them in groceries? Are you... Fasting for them? What, what, is, what does the praying bit mean? Is that words or actions? Prayer is action. We're going to talk about prayer in a couple of weeks. But the word of God today comes with that sobering word to explain to us what Luke said to us very clearly. Luke 21, 34 says, but be on guard. All these questions from Jesus is an example of what this explains. Luke is a physician. 
He wanted to explain the ins and the outs. He said, but be on guard. Be on guard so that your hearts are not weighted down and depressed with the giddiness of the voucher. And the nausea of self-indulgence. And the worldly worries of this life. A doctor knew that there's a way of living that would affect us with a weighted and depressed heart. With a less than steady heart. And with the nausea, not of your cortisol only, of your self-indulgence. Be careful that your hearts. Another version says, watch out. Jesus is asking us before this happened. When we go back home, I don't want you to go happy. I want you to go questioning. Your walk with God with exceeding mercy but honest truth and say, am I being careful? Am I being watchful? Am I being weighted down and depressed? Because I believe in this room there is depression. I don't have to know the numbers. I can feel it in my bones. Depression means you don't have the weight and the strength to do what you're passionate about. Who's struggling with that? Can I see your hands up? Come on. Freedom comes with honesty. No, no, up, up, like you really mean. That, exactly. I wish I could make the YouTube thing just kind of see you guys, you guys like in the back. Because some people online look at this and it's like, oh, they're all perfect. It's only me that is just right there. Yeah. No, no, no. But not only that. Who is self-indulgent lately? Come on, I'm not even going to look. Gonna go, yeah, what about you? Who's self-indulgent? So this is a word from God for us to understand who he is. And he's asking us about the way we're living in. What about you? W-A-Y. The way. What is the way you're living in? And you probably saw that coming. But that doesn't make you more interesting or intelligent. That makes you just read the Bible. And you don't win more points for that because there's no transformation by reading. There's transformation by putting on action. What is the way? Do you know Jesus? And what do you say about me? And some of us that are good with talking say, okay, I can say a lot about Jesus. But do you live it? If I close your mouth, I take your phone, and I call your friends, what do they say? There's some moments that Lola looks at me funny. I have to say, that's my dog. My wife always tells me, you have to say, every time you mention Lola, you talk about her like she was a human. I have to say, she's a dog. So, hello. So, True. Kind of, yeah. But there's a moment that Lola looks at me when someone funny is coming. Sometimes I'm so sleepy that I just kind of like, uh, yeah, I know. <laughs> I fake it because, but sometimes we fake it in our own lives. What about you? I feel so comfortable to have you bored. I could have you for 30 more days, 30 more minutes. But I think we can worship from a different place today. I think we're in a moment in life that is demanding from us to give it on demand. But God wants to stop a lot of things and make us think again. Not because he doesn't know, because he wants us to understand. We ask questions in a season of our life, and we thought we got it. You didn't. Because you would never be able to get God completely. But today, without that weight, 
we have that moment with God to say, what about? What do you want to know, Lord? Is there any area in your life that you believe God might be asking you this question? There's no other human that can know. As we have the worship team back and we start closing, I want you to think of this. What about you? You cannot point fingers. You don't have to. I mean, just realize that everyone is as dodgy as you are. They might be dodgy in a different area, but they're dodgy. It is what it is. No, but I didn't do all these things. Maybe them didn't, you know what I mean? We give value to our sin and say, you know what? I didn't do all these things that are less acceptable. I just gossiped a little bit. It is not about being entertained. We're entertaining God. God wants to break us free from that. What about you? Jesus didn't entertain the criticism. And he's not going to entertain your lack of proximity. He's going to go and access that and says, what about you? What do you think? Every time I heard of this passage in the Bible, it went so much further. Because it's juicier to talk about God thinking what Peter said. It is juicier to think about how we are you know, we have the keys to this everlasting life, you know, and as the church, we are empowered by God. But today, God is asking us to stop at this question. What about me? I want to take that to God. I want to take it to him and say, what do you see in me? Peter took that to God. And said, you're the son of the living God. And some of us would love to fantasize that that's what we're saying. But our actions have to remain the same. Show me your actions. How much of that, Peter, was that in your life this week? Maybe it's last week. It is not about having the right action or answer with God. It is about coming near you can come to Jesus today and say you know what in this area that doesn't look like you're my God and if this friend or this other comment would talk for me that wouldn't look like you're my God and if this action would be seen by people that don't know me they will never even think that I'm your follower. Maybe you are hiding it from people that are loving God and as broken as you are and you have hidden them from them because you think you have to be loved. We're going to talk about rejection and rebellion the next couple of weeks. If you don't want the gospel, please don't come. This is going to be very difficult. But we're going to talk about what God thinks of the things that we receive as rejection and rebellion. And how he wants to equip us with power. Not to be victims, but to be people that thrive. And the first thing that he wants to do is to ask us, who do we think he is? We cannot access our rebellions and our rejections. We cannot access the things that limit us on what we want to prove on the things that we are victims of or at least we want to think of until we don't answer that question. As a church, we want meat. We don't want good messages that fill us with excitement and euphoria, dopamine from a Sunday that leave us alone on a Monday. We need to answer the real questions. We need to go back to the source. We need to go to God. The service is never the end. It's just a beginning. It's an equipping and it's a push. It's an empowerment. 
for us to go to God and say, Lord, what do you have? It is for us to answer questions. Enough with messages that feel good and sent us gratified, you know, and as it was a good meal. We're not here to fear good. The world will not feel good on the way home after your conversation about God with them. They won't. They will be on the bus. There's different situations there. Well, we need to be Christians that are solid. They're not expectant of excitement to fill their quota. Jesus is saying, what do you feel? He didn't fulfill the quota of excitement that the disciples had. Most of his disciples left him because he was not exciting them. And they lost the way. Some of them, Peter said, you are the Christos. Christos curios. You are the exalted. You are the anointed. You are that one, the Messiah. Even he had a bad day and said, I, I don't know him. Like maybe you and me have had. Maybe this week. Maybe on Wednesday. Maybe half of Wednesday, maybe. You know, at the end of Wednesday, you picked it up and said, Lord, about that, I'm sorry. What about you? What about you? If you ask God to stop asking you, you don't belong to him. This is the day that you cross the line and say, Lord, you can ask me every day. What about me? I want to belong to you. I don't want restrictions. You are not like others. I don't need restrictions with me with every head bowed this is a moment for you to be honest with God it doesn't have to do with what you think you know it has to do with saying God here I am what about me some of us will want to give a rapid answer to feel safe But God says, you're safe in me. You don't have to answer. Let me cover you. Let me bless you. Peter answered very quick with something that God gave him. And Jesus said, you are blessed. That means God speaks good of you. So today, there is that kind of grace and that kind of mercy in this room. God speaks of you like one that came to meet with him. There's grace. There's mercy. But there are areas that he wants to go deeper and stronger and fuller and more complete in, in your life. And God is asking you that question. What about you in this area, in this situation? It is not about your strength. It's not about what people say. What about you? God today says, I have you. Would you give me that area? Would you give me that understanding? Would you give me that situation? Would you give me that moment in your life that you're trying to resolve? Would you give me that relationship? Would you give me, would you give me so I can let you know who I am? A couple months ago, I was going through a very difficult situation in my life. It was very unfair. And I asked God, what do you want me to do? And he said, if you don't do anything, I will show you who I am. And after that day, the pathway of our family together, my wife and my kids, their faith, our faith, and the people that we walk with has changed. And today there is a word in this house that says, what about you? If you need a change, he is the one that changes all things. He's the one that knows. And I speak life into death and into the confusion, into the boredom 
and to the areas of our life that want to keep us dormant, Jesus is asking us today because he wants to know what about you. Because he has something for you. I don't mind being long and I don't care about being boring. I'm caring about serving a full meal. This is the dessert. Repentance. The beauty. The nearness. The completeness. The table is set. We just sit at the table. What about you? Father, I pray. I pray for your, your abundance. Father, we understand that most of us cannot really honestly answer this question. It is higher than we can think and imagine. Is higher than we can be honest about, Lord. It's one of those questions that we don't know if we're even telling you the truth, even if we want to, Lord. What about us, oh, Father? We don't know. We think, Father, that we have submitted our lives. We think that we have submitted our thoughts, relationships, in every area, Lord. But you know. Father, one thing we know is that when you ask, you don't ask us from a place of control. You ask us from a place of mercy, Lord. And we ask, Lord, today for the miracle of repentance. Father, that all of us will go with a spirit of repentance. Father, we don't need to understand or have all the points of this time together clear. But Father, would you endow us, Lord, Baptize us, surround us, cover us, Lord, with a spirit of repentance. So, Father, we will go and we'll be able to see you, Lord, for who you are. Jesus, you are the way. Jesus, you are the promise. Jesus. You are the provision. Jesus, you are the one that has all power. Jesus, you are the Son of God. Jesus, you are our peace. Jesus, you are our redemption. Jesus, you are our life. Jesus, you are our joy. Jesus, you're the one that is the King. Jesus, it is your authority that governs our days. Jesus, you're the healing for our minds. Jesus, it is in your name that we find all truth. Jesus, you are the word. Jesus, you are the one that calls us out of bed and back to rest every day. Jesus, you are El Shaddai, the Prince of Peace, the one that governs. Jesus, you are the Ruach, Lord. You are our breath. When we wake up, Lord, there is nothing in us that can escape that you woke us up, Lord. Jesus, we come to you with simple hearts, with no answers, Lord. Just to ask you, what do you think? What do you think, Lord? Father, I pray for every heavy heart in this room. Every heart that has been pushed down and depressed. Father, in spirit of death that has mocked several of us during the week, thinking, Lord, that we could do what we could not do without your power. Lord. And we have not felt enough. Lord. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, I pray for your spirit right now. Your presence, Lord. Your healing, Lord. Your healing, Father. Your joy. Father, we don't ask you for that kind of happiness. The giggles, Lord. Father, we ask for your guidance. Father, in the name of Jesus, if you have been depressed and struggling with sadness, with lack of purpose, 
with lack of physical and emotional strength, I ask you to put your hand up and say, Jesus, I need you. And I need you right now. Right now in this room, all over this place, Lord. Right now, in the name of Jesus, Lord. Father, you are the one that provides. You are the victory. Father, you are the one that strips every shame, Father. Everything that took it out of us, Lord. Father, you're the one that it gives it back and it gives it even multiplied, Lord. We ask, Lord, that even through our life and, Father, through even the things, the thoughts that we have been going through, Lord. Father, that people around us will be able to be sourced with your joy, with your freedom, with your life. Lord, in the name of Jesus, the spirit of life. That restores the mindsets, Lord. Every thought. Every thought, Lord. There are thoughts that come against your truth, Lord. Father, and we say, I need your thoughts, Lord. I need your thoughts. There's some of you that want to go and have prayer. There's people in every side of the church. The Lord is doing something new in your life. Don't miss this opportunity. Don't miss this situation. This is the moment. This is the day. Go to one of them and say, I need prayer. This is for you. You can stand up. You can move. You can say, Lord, as I move and as I go to my brother, my sister, I am one with the body. I am one that actually is humble. I'm one that says, Lord, I don't want to do it by myself. I can do it, Lord. But Father, I want people around me, Lord. There's some people that have been tempted and ashamed of your temptations. You might have not done it. But you have been ashamed. There are thoughts that have come to you this week. You don't have to say your business to anyone, but give your hand a good shout out. Your temptations. The ones that you would not say to anyone. I see you in the room. I see you. Put them high. Put them high. There is this moment. And these temptations have no hold on you. They said, you will become my slave. But God said, I am your deliverer. So in the name of Jesus, Lord, every chain of shame, Father, every chain, Father, of having you tied up to what was just yesterday, what you have done, every memory, the enemy has come with thoughts in the early hours of your day, saying to you, this is how you have lived, and this is how you will stay. But in the name of Jesus, there is power today in the room that says, I break it. Who do you say I am? Today we say that Jesus is the one. Today we say we have walked with you. Father, we rely in you. Father, it is your wisdom. It is your strength that we rely. It's not our strength. It is your truth. It is your power. It is your peace. It is your thoughts. It is who you are. Father, that lives in us. Father, every chain, Lord, depression, death, mockery, Father, in the name of Jesus, every fear, fear of death. There's someone in this room that has woken up today with fear of dying. And God is saying you will not die. That is not for you. That is not for you. That's not what I'm saying. It is now that God says I will not allow it to grow in you. You think your days are done. But today I say who do you think I am? It is the day you cross a line with your Savior. Jesus. Jesus. That person, I want to pray for you. I don't know who you are, but if you're in this place, I want you to lift your hand or stand up. I want to pray for you. Every head bow, even the worship team, everyone praying. Just please, we, just give some privacy. If you're in this place and today you were afraid of death and the enemy has been doing your number with this, I want you to stand up. I want to pray for you and with you. I have suffered the same thing in my life. You're not alone. God knows. I stand with you for who he is. Stand up. 
Don't be afraid. Father, you have our attention. You are our king. We are about you. What about us? <laughs> Lord, we're about you. Father, we declare you lifted high. Father, I pray for each one of these things. In the name of Jesus. The name above all name. The name that heals, that restores, Lord. Father, in the name of Jesus. Father, there is a blessing in this room. Of your presence. Of your glory. Father, there is a release over each one of us. There are, there are things that we have been carrying, Lord. Father, that they're not what you wanted us to carry. But Father, in the name of Jesus, today we give him over. Father, we're like those that want to follow you. What about you? It is only in you, Lord, that we find the words of life. So Father, help us. In all these areas, Lord, that we are, we're up for a fight. The Father, we're not giving the best of the fights. Father, those areas that I don't feel like I'm, I'm winning. All over this place, Lord, we all have different struggles. But your mercy is enough, Lord. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we pray. Amen.